Episode 2, How to Roll Your Own Continuous Integration Test Harness. For those of you who use TDD on a regular basis, um, this will be of interest to you. For those of you who don't, please stick around and watch the benefits and how you can use inter system classes to roll your own continuous integration test server. TDD, Test Driven Development. I don't have a whole lot of time to go over this subject, but I will boil it down for purposes of the screencast, is that you have a particular business requirement, and you're going to be coding to meet this requirement. The idea here is that you write a test first before you start coding that fails, and then you dig in and you start writing your code. Once this code is written, it then gets run through the test suite again and passes. Once it passes, you go back and you clean it up. Okay, so I can assure myself that I have not lost a whole bunch of folks already. I want to reiterate what I'm doing. I'm going to be testing something. That something is a particular data transform that meets a business requirement, which is right here. Okay, how I do this is I write the test first, and, it, and I get it to fail. Then I write my code so that it passes, and then I plug it into continuous integration so it gets run all the time against random production data and notifies me when something has failed. So... Back to the very beginning of it, we're going to be writing a test. In this case, we're going to be writing a failing test. And how we do this is we extend unit test .test case. And when we do so, here are four of the methods that I have pre-built. On before all tests kind of sets things up for me to run the rest of the test. Test, test. test MSH, excuse me, is our actual test. Get random message is a helper class to grab a random message out of our message class and source is just a property and here I said hey grab a random message out of episode 2 inbound on our production again the on before all test gets executed what it does is it goes out runs this random test message class which is at the which is at the bottom here of our class and then instantiates the message ID that comes back once it gets it back it runs it on this transformer um, so we get a source and a target back after the transformer gets done cooking it and once the target comes back, we can then make some comparisons and run some assertions based on that. So, okay, so let's look at the test ourselves. So we have a method test MSH. Now, I don't have a very good business case for this here, but what I'm going to be saying to you is that the business requirement is that MSH10 must be different than when it comes in. The control ID must be changed and cannot be the same as it's coming through. Uh, again, not a good example, but uh, a very concrete one for you to look at, uh, and you'll see. So here is our macro assert not equals provided by inner systems. And what this says is, hey, do not let the value of MSH10 from our target equal the value from our source. And you name this test at the end here in checking for delta on control ID. So all of your output when you run your tests will be looking for, let's scoot it over here, checking for delta on control ID. So that is the basis of a test. It's not a very good one again, but you, you will see it being executed and, and start to understand that this here is what we're really after is we're checking for a delta on the control ID. Okay, so we built our first test, so let's go about running it. Now, there are a couple ways to do this as I compile it. I'll, I'll show you here. One of them is a good old-fashioned way through the terminal, um, through C session. What we do is we run this unit test.manager, and we run the test with the above flags. Now, these will be in the show notes, but what I want to show you here is that I have uh, a little bit of the code that I was writing to the output. You know, I was doing some log infos in there, and that showed up. Our, the name of our test was test MSH and it ran. Um, the, our assertion that ran was assert not equals. And here's that text that I was emphasizing once or twice in the last part there was uh, checking for delta on control ID. And it, it's showing here that we are a failure. Now this isn't uh, too bad since we're using TDD and it's okay to fail um, at least the first, second, third time because uh, we're going to circle back and, and fix this later on in this episode. But that's one way to run it. The second way is to do this is through the debugger. And how you do this is you set as debug target of, and I went ahead and pasted uh, what I wrote in there before, and I'll go back, back, back uh, like Chris Berman. And once I get back to show you that I'm just running that class, I will set that as my debug target. 
and now I will run it. So once I run it, you'll see here that the output goes back to something you may be used to um, in Studio, so you're not in the terminal. What you don't get is a lot of the um, log infos that you would if you're running it through the terminal, but you can see here that our test MSH has failed, and we have now completed the red step in our TDD process here with this integration. Okay, so let's go green with our TDD development cycle. Okay, so we had a failing test. Now we need to actually write our code. And what I found here is that in my template, all I do is I copy over MSH to MSH from my source to target. Now that's not going to work because, uh, one, uh, they're going to match all the time, and that's not what the customer wanted. And two, um, that's just not good HL7 messaging. So what I've done here is I've set up a timestamp, which will certainly make it uh, unique. And I've set the value of MSH10 uh, equal to the timestamp. And I'm going to go ahead and run my test again. Now, once I run my test, pull this up here, you will see that my test MSH, my assert not equals, has now passed. So I'm not, I have a delta on my control ID and that has passed. So we are now at the green cycle. It may not be as clean as we want, but you know, it works and it meets the business requirements so far. What I want to put your attention here to is this uh, URL that gets spit out too at the end of your test. And what this is, is an intersystem supplied HTML output of your test. So as you can see here, the two reds, one was through the console, the other was through um, the studio, through the debugger. And this is a failure. As we drill down here, we can see that test MSH failed. And here's our assert not equals, checking for delta on control ID, and it failed. Now, now we're at the green level here. We'll just drill into here uh, as we keep going. And our test method, MSH, has passed. We're at the red green. I won't go into the refactor here, but I am going to go into continuous integration next. Okay, so on to the cool part, continuous integration. All that work we did of testing our code, making it fail, and then writing our code to make it pass will pay off here. What we want to do is run that continually. You know, why not? Why not run that against a, a, um, a, a random message out of our production? And how we're going to do that is we are going to write a system task. And how you do this is you extend sys.task definition. Now, this is ridiculously easy. Um, when you see the three parts that you need to do here. First, you extend that class. You give it a task name. Here it's ensemblisms.continuousintegration. I'm going to change it because I've recompiled that before. And uh, I'm going to call it E2 so you can see the magic happen on the other side here when we go ahead and schedule this task. Now, here is a, the, the magic method on task, which is the third and final part of writing a scheduled task. And here is nothing you're not familiar with that you haven't seen the entire screencast is, hey, run this unit test. So here is the basis of a scheduled task and once it's compiled you will see it in the system management portal next. So here here we go we're going into the system management portal let's find the task manager which is where is it oh there it is right below me there I will go ahead and schedule a new task I'm going to give it a name Ensemblisms 2 this is a uh, continuous integration And in the namespace, I'd like to run it in. It was when we compiled it was Ensemblisms. And once we select that, here are all of the task types that were compiled under that namespace. And here's E2, the one we were just dealing with. So let's select that. And we're going to hit Next. And that's it. I want to run this, oh, I don't know, once every minute. So I don't know, aggressive, not aggressive enough. You tell me. But here it is, scheduled. And our continuous integration task will now run continually and test against a random message in our environment uh, based on anything in our unit test. So that's pretty cool. So let's go back to our, our our unit test report and it's running here. As you can see, we've got three tests here and all of them have passed because we haven't changed anything in the code. Now let's see, let's 2.2901. Let's race this and see if we can get the test to fail. Go back into our DTL. Let's back out this change that we did and just copy MSH back to MSH, recompile, and let's go back and see if we've beat it. Probably not. It was probably about 10 seconds there. Um, but let's go over here to our scheduler. Let's run it ad hoc again so you can see it fail. 
and as you go back into the test report, there it is, it has failed. So extremely powerful uh, in maintaining a constantly changing environment to where you can run these tests all the time and test against production data and you become extremely resilient to change. Thank you, that's our episode. For a front-to-back testing framework for Ensemble, check out West Michigan's resident Agile Evangelist Atomic Object. Links to AO resources are available in the show notes, so don't hesitate to check them out.